Hi, hi, friends. If you're listening to this video on the go and can't take notes, we've made a nice looking PDF outline of main ideas for you to print and save for future reference. You can find the message outline by clicking on the link below. Enjoy. So I want to talk about this path, this path to a stronghold. Um, uh, let's take pride and haughtiness, for example. If you're acting smugly or scornfully, thinking that you're better than other people, that can lead to developing a stronghold of pride where you can never be wrong. Do you know people like that? Have you ever known somebody like that? Oh my goodness, I have known people. I still know people like that who can never be wrong. These strongholds, for instance, pride or haughtiness, it attacks that person's spiritual identity and any stronghold does. The spirit of fear attacks the spiritual identity of the person. It's the place where you're supposed to function at your very strongest point. And they form what we call your false personality. You see, as Satan observes a softness or a weak tendency toward a certain fleshly behavior, for instance, boredom, just a fleshly behavior that you wouldn't even think twice about. But let's just take a look at what that does. Let's say boredom. What Satan will do, he'll see that and he directs a specific strong man to take advantage of that developing weakness until such a bondage exists in the person that he needs supernatural help to get set free. Why would you have to get set free of boredom for, in, for goodness sake? Well, boredom leads to all sorts of sin and I'm going to help you see that here in a moment. You see boredom becomes chronic dissatisfaction and it leads to looking for the wrong ways to feel the emptiness growing inside the soul and children don't recognize this happening and ignorant uh, ignorant parents allow it to happen literally giving their tender children over to sin patterns until their personality is distorted from its true nature and all these works of the flesh are deadly seedlings that begin growing in our lives if we are not careful. Haven't you seen teenagers? They didn't start out that way. Teenagers who are lost and bored, you see them on the streets every once in a while. It's always so sad to see a lonely lost teenager and you can tell they're not being parented you can tell they don't have love in their lives they're bored and they're looking for some way to bring some kind of uh, to meet some kind of deep-seated need in them that none of the activities they're involved in could ever meet and yet there's those seedlings of boredom growing 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 leading a teen leading a teenager to look for the wrong kinds of activities thinking they're going to meet a need and so sin is conceived and sin grows in the heart so if your heart wasn't trained in character as a child then these seedlings grow into full-blown strongholds that need the supernatural power of God to be free of them. And you grow up thinking that your off-balance or unwhole personality is just the way you are. But this too is a lie from the enemy. A whole and healthy personality is Christ-likeness as demonstrated by the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22. And many of you have struggled to experience God's love in your life and getting the breakthroughs that you need in the Spirit because you're basically unaware of the enemy that binds you. So over many years of being given over to the works of the flesh, these strongholds must be dealt with aggressively if they are to be disabled in your life. And they must be pulled out by the roots or they will continue growing bigger and bigger, dominating.
motivating you to a greater degree every day and with each passing year. Strongholds are different for everyone, but ministers who teach on this topic seem to agree that there are at least 10 basic categories of overarching strongholds that each have a collection of behaviors that are uniquely characteristic to them that are influenced by demonic activity. Now, I'm, I've gathered just from my experience with people over the years and my own personal experience as well that most people have at least two or three strongholds and fairly healthy people, okay? have two or three strongholds with a possible fourth and fifth for those who have deeper long-term issues. However, you might have an additional characteristic of one or two others that are more superficial in your life. And I'm going to just read to you some basic stronghold categories that I've collected up and, and in the following videos I'll be sharing with you, I'm going to go over these in detail with you so that you can, because I just want to help you to see in your own life where uh, you might have um, real deep struggles that you haven't known what to do with. And if you can recognize the behaviors associated with a stronghold, you can begin repenting and get rid of the enemy off your soul. So we already were uh, talking about the spirit of heaviness and there's a spirit of fear. There's a perverse spirit, um, seducing spirits, which is uh, manipulation. The perverse spirit is more like a, a needy person, a real needy, grasping, sucking, needy person. Uh, spirit of error is a person who's unsubmissive, unteachable, and argumentative, often angry. A lying spirit is someone who denies responsibility. They're unhappy. Uh, the spirit of whoredoms, and that, um, I was just referring to that with boredom. It starts with boredom. It's a person that is dissatisfied and bored. And goes into pursuing all sorts of things. I'll keep that one out here so we can talk about that a little bit. And we mentioned jealousy, the way of Cain. He started with suspicion and self-pity and bitterness and became very, very jealous <clears throat> to the point of anger and murder. And then there's the spirit of pride and haughtiness, which is an irritability and a scorn toward other people. So we've got um, many, many behaviors that are associated with each one of these. And we'll go into those in, in later videos. Let me talk about the whoredoms here for a moment, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. The level, there's the levels where you're going deeper into captivity. Um, the Bible calls it whoredoms in Hosea 5, verse 4, and Hosea 4, verse 12. For the spirit of whoredoms has caused them to err, and they have gone whoring from under their God. So here are the possible behaviors. Um, boredom, being bored, chronic dissatisfaction. And so there's a need to escape, to find happiness, in need of a kind of like a dopamine rush. That person can be easily sad. Um, worldliness, gluttony, binge eating, overdoing it with activities, or any kind of binge, binging on activities is overdoing it with sports, hobbies, uh, soap operas, food, drink, favorite activities, spending, gambling, drinking. So there's excessive appetites that can lead to addictions. And addictions form, and sometimes self-medication like drugs, alcohol, tobacco, gambling, food. And they engage in some of the, these activities only when alone. So a lot of the, the excessiveness of whoredoms is done privately. 
But then you go deeper with this and you can become fixated on addictions. For instance, you know, you've heard the expression glutton for punishment. Well, that's what a person who's bound up in whoredoms is after they are a glutton for punishment because excessive appetites punish the body, they punish the soul, really puts you in a bad place. And um, these people end up needing a quota before they're satisfied. For instance, they need to have a certain number of, uh, for instance, beers. They need to have a certain number of beers before they can quit for the day. They need to have a certain number of cigarettes before they can quit for the day, before they can go to bed. They need to have, I remember knowing somebody who had to watch a certain number of TV movies before they could even go to sleep. Um, these binge activities where they had to have, or binge eating even, like a whole box of cookies. Two or four wouldn't do. They'd had, you have to eat the whole box or they couldn't stop. Um, these are excessive behaviors and excessive appetites. So then you've got to have this quota. So you've got compulsive behaviors. You can have an inferiority complex. You can have phobias. Um, when you're going into such extreme, uh, excessive, um, compulsive behaviors, then everything in your life starts to get affected by it and you can take on phobias. And you could, of course, feel very inadequate and insecure, but there could be eating disorders associated with that, anorexia, nightmares even. A spirit of lack and poverty is often accompanied with whoredoms. A love of money, unfaithfulness, adultery. Um, there's just a poverty of soul. And so you go really deep with this and you've got idol worship going on, idolatry, there's poverty and there's want of every good thing. So um, we're wanting a pure spirit and faithfulness. See, this person doesn't know how to be faithful. That's really sad. Whoredoms is a whoring after idols, other things that take the place of God. And so just being bored and dissatisfied, we can call it just being bored. It's serious. It leads somewhere. Chronic dissatisfaction is serious. You don't want to let your kids be bored. You want them to learn how to be grateful for the time that they have been given to develop purpose in their life, you see, to develop their interests and, and to be a servant to the family and household. You want them to be productive and fruitful in how they spend their time. What does it profit a man if he gains a whole world and loses his own soul. You see, that's the condition of boredom. That's what happens with our teenagers today. They're bored. Their soul is bored and they've lost their soul. You see, what is a profit if they get 12 years of academic knowledge but lose their own soul. They lose their identity. They're bored with that kind of education. They lose their identity. They don't even know who they are or what they like to do. I used to talk about that sort of thing in my lifestyle learning messages a long time ago. It was really concerning to me to see children being allowed to be bored. So do you recognize any of those behaviors I just described in one of your children? You know, if you do, or even in yourself, take it seriously. There's men allowed some demonic influence there that can take, if those behaviors aren't arrested, they will carry you or your child further into bondage. It won't stay at that level. It will just get worse with each passing year, you see? And the problems will become more severe. So when you notice symptoms of the flesh working in your life, it's really imperative to take action in the name of Jesus to disable and disarm the enemy. Because once a stronghold is actually 
present, it is very difficult to disable it without someone's help. Stronghold is simply a very strong grip of the enemy on somebody's soul. You must act against the fleshly tendencies before they gain greater control and disallow them from working anymore in your life. And as for your children, it is really much better to train them while recognizing their sin tendencies that they really did inherit from you so as not to allow strongholds to develop in the first place. And that is possible. You can train your children well to the best that you know how to to prevent strongholds now there's a certain amount that you probably will not be able to do simply because you can't see everything in the spirit you can't understand everything all at once perhaps you have a spouse who won't close the door to the enemy in their life whereas you have and so there's a certain amount of um of spiritual activity that you can't address as effectively as you would like to. But there's a lot that you can, and you want to be able to take charge over everything that you possibly can. So your particular ways of the flesh will show up in your actions, your tone of voice, the spirit of your communication. Even when you try to suppress it and to disarm the enemy, you absolutely must stop the old patterns of responses by choosing not to do them again. Repenting, turning away from them, and coming to understand how you hurt the people that you love, standing in the way between you and others from having intimate heart level uh, connections. And then you practice new patterns of response where you will see and experience for yourself how bound you really are. Because as soon as you start trying to make changes in your relational patterns of behavior, you realize how hard it is. It's hard to make changes and that helps you see how bound you really are and how in need of God's merciful grace you are for the overcoming life. So I want to give you some examples of strong holds that start out with a relational activity that's selfish. In James 1, 14 and 15, it tells us that every man is tempted and drawn away by his own lusts. When lust is conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. For instance, you want what other people have, just like Cain wanted what Abel had. He wanted acceptance. He wanted his offering to be accepted by God. He wanted that. And so he felt left out when Abel got what he got. He got accepted. He left. He, he felt left out. So that spirit of jealousy had him bound. So if a spirit of jealousy has had you bound for years, then no matter how hard you try, every time a familiar or repeating situation comes up that triggers a certain reaction in your heart, it will be nearly impossible for you not to be jealous. Here's another example. Let's say you surpass self-control and do too much of a single activity until it is out of balance in your life. And you know, if you're doing that in one activity, you're probably doing it in another because that is what the soul is leaning toward doing excessive amounts of things. It's a lack of self-control. Well, if a spirit of whoredom has been allowed to continue operating over a long period of time, then no matter how hard you try, every time you try to temper or moderate your appetite in some area, you will find it very difficult to do so. See, you'll you'll end up with excess. Whenever you try to moderate, it will be hard. And so you will stop and you'll go into excess. You see, this is how the enemy influences us. See, the strong man has been assigned because of a weakness, okay? Satan saw a weakness when you were young. And so he assigned the strong man whoredom. And then the demons come and they start making suggestions. Do this. Do that. 
and you obey those suggestions and you keep going deeper and deeper into bondage. You see how that works? This is the enemy. Get him off your soul. Here's another example. If you feel sorry for yourself, you're inviting a spirit of heaviness and self-pity might become a recurring pattern or excessive mourning, sorrow, or grief, or loneliness. If you repeatedly choose to be incapable, thinking you don't know how to do things, you will become unable to do the tasks that God has called you to do, and you're inviting a spirit of infirmity. In some more severe cases, even just carrying out regular life functions may be hard to do. That's infirmity. If you like to be flattered or you like to flatter, giving empty compliments all the time, this is coming from a lying spirit and it will get you. Religious bondages will also be acting against you in full deception about your true needs. We'll talk about these more in depth in another video so I can show you the progression and how it becomes such a bondage. If you're unsubmissive to the closest relationships in your life, then a spirit of error is being invited into your mind. Unsubmissiveness will always become um, about not uh, wanting to be corrected. You see, unsubmissiveness means a person will not receive correction and instruction. And that means that truth cannot be received. And that's where deception comes into the life. If they can't receive truth, then they have to go toward the error. And so they make up their own ideas for what to believe and what to think. And so this will lead, because of the unsubmissiveness, it will lead to strife. It will lead to lots of contention, defensiveness, and argumentativeness. If timidity is allowed to gain control, then a spirit of fear, eventually torment, doubt, anxiety, will be the patterns of behavior. If addiction to substances, then a spirit of bondage, compulsive sins and behaviors, even religious bondage, will have you in its grip. If carelessness or misplaced care and concern, then foolish behavior, chronic worrying, twisting the words of others are patterns, then a perverse spirit is being invited in. Unreasonableness, unclean mind, abortion or shortened life of good works and abuse in its most evil express expressions will be the result of a perverse spirit influencing that person's soul. A seared conscience can be attracted to and fascinated with false prophets, charismatic hooky pooky, um, deception, opening the door to seducing spirits. They wander around from one ear tingling word to another. It's what this person does who has a, who has a seared conscience, a seducing spirit influencing their mind, looking for somebody to prey upon. Okay, a seducing spirit, somebody who's manipulative, always needing somebody to um, get them on their side to agree with them. Okay, so these are just a few examples of how what can seem like a fairly innocent activity at the start or not that serious of an activity can lead to bondage. So we're going to go into those a little bit more in depth in coming videos. So I hope that this was helpful, showing a relational path to captivity. I'm planning on bringing a lot more information to you about this topic to help you see uh, what you may be doing to cooperate with the enemy in your life so that you can help your family more, more um, knowledgeably to have the wisdom to know what to do with um, the condition of your current state, you know, the condition of your soul and the souls of your precious kids. And I pray, Lord, that you give lots of grace, Lord, cover these homes with your grace. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to say goodbye now and don't forget to love on your precious, precious kiddos today. They're dear to the Lord. Bye-bye.